for tuning in to Perfecting Live, the online service for Perfecting Love Community Church. Pastor Jay wants to meet with you. We will have ministry meetings in the next two weeks. Please see your ministry leader for further instructions. You're invited to the virtual baby shower for Jason A. Mitchell Jr. It will be hosted Sunday, June 21st at 4 p.m. via Facebook Live. For more information and a better look at the flyer, please visit our Facebook page, Perfecting Love Community Church. Zoom, Zoom, Zoom. Our virtual study groups are really growing. Our groups meet for Perfecting Wow on Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. and Sunday School every Sunday at 9 a.m. There is no excuse why we can't be present and on time. Let's grow together. If this ministry is a blessing to you, we pray you will consider being a financial blessing to the ministry. Your gift of any amount is a tremendous blessing to our outreach. To give, simply text PLCC to 77977. Click on the link and follow the instructions. Thank you in advance for your generosity. For the latest information, please visit our website, perfectinglovecommunitychurch.org, like our Facebook page, Perfecting Love Community Church, or subscribe to our YouTube channel, Perfecting Love CC. These have been your morning announcements. We are Perfecting Love Community Church, the place where imperfect people strive for God's perfect love. We don't judge, we love, and we love you with the love of the Lord. Be blessed and have a wonderful day. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Amen. Good morning to you. Truth of the Lord has made a way for me. Has he made a way for you? He keeps on making a way. Come on, Lord, you made a way. Come on, sit, sit. Lord, you made a way. A way out of, way out of no way. You just keep on. You keep on making, making a way. A way for me. I don't know how. I don't know why. You love me, love so, me much. so much oh, yeah. that you keep on making away. away. Let's say that again. Lord, you made a way. Lord, you made a way. Out of the way. Out of the way. Come on. You keep on making it away. away for me. I don't know why. I don't know why. You love me so much. Love me so much that you keep on making it away. I don't deserve it. Come on. I don't deserve it. Sometimes I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. But you know what? You just keep on blessing. Come on. But you still bless me. Over and over again. Over and over again. Let's say it again. I don't deserve it. I don't deserve it. Hey. Sometimes I'm not worthy. Sometimes I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. But you keep on blessing me. You keep on blessing me. When I was down, pick me up. You made a way. Made a way. When I was lost, you found me in sin. You saved me. When I was broken, you fixed me. You made a way. Made a way. When I was sick, you healed me. When I was hurt, brought me out. When I was down, pick me up. You made a way. Made a way. When I was lost in my you sin, you found me. In
Come on, come, come on, on, come on. Yeah. Yeah. How many glad that the Lord did it for yeah. you? Just look down over your life and think of the thing that the Lord brought you through. What he brought you over. Come on. So glad you did it. So glad you did So glad you did So glad you did it. So Despite the time, God continues to keep his hands on us. And we're just excited about the opportunity to come into your living rooms 
and worship the Lord with you. Amen. Welcome to Perfected Live, the online worship experience of Perfected Love Community Church. This is what we do every Sunday morning. We meet you in high praise because we're excited about what God continues to do for us. That's right. We're excited about it and we're so excited that we want to love on one another. And even right now, we want you to go ahead, take an opportunity if you haven't already done so, and share some virtual love with your brothers and sisters in Christ. We see that you all have joined today, and we want to just give you a high five with this bump, a virtual hug, let you know that we're thinking about you, and that we can't wait to see you again. Hallelujah, God has been so kind to us, and we're just grateful for his presence, even right here virtually. And listen. When we get done with church today, we want you to meet us here at the church at 3180 Old Bidwell, right on the parking lot for a lot of love. That's right. We're going to keep the praise party going and just lay our eyes on one another. And so we're looking for you to join us today. We're going to practice social distancing. We're not going to get together and touch one another, but we're going to Make sure that we can see one another and love on each other. Here's some great music and bring your lunch with you. So whatever you got there that you want to pack up, go ahead and pack it right now while you're listening to worship and getting involved in the worship celebration. And we want you to meet us here at 12 o'clock p.m. That's right. We want you to meet us at 12 noon. We're going to have a great time in the presence of the Lord for just one hour. Will you meet us today? We look forward to seeing you today uh, here at 12 o'clock noon. Come with your family, and we're going to have a spot in the parking lot just for you, and we're going to make sure that we keep enough distance between you and the next person. Also, we want to just say thank you, thank you, thank you for all of you who continue to sow so faithfully in this ministry. We're able to continue to do ministry in the spirit of excellence just because you have been so kind enough to allow God to touch your heart to consider being a blessing to this church. And we received those gifts and we're able to continue to push the gospel forward. You may be watching today and wondering how you can give. There's, it's real easy to participate in the giving process. But what we want you to understand with giving, we don't ask you to give in response to pressure. According to the word, we don't ask you to give reluctantly. We don't want you to give uh, all grudgingly and upset and angry. We want you to give cheerfully according to the word. Because if you give cheerfully, God will bless you according to the spirit in which you give. And there's three easy ways that you can give. You can mail your seed into the church. You can mail us at 3180 Old Get Well. You can also do it virtually. You can do it online, whether you use our website, www.perfectinglovecommunitychurch.org. Or, of course, if you want to go uh, to our app, which is both the same process, if you go there, you can give as well. And then another way you can give is to text to give. That's our easiest method, which many people have been doing to make sure that they can get those gifts into the church. All you have to do is text PL. CC to the number 77977 and we will receive that gift and we will thank God for blessing you so generously for sowing into this church. We love you and thank God for you. We do need those of us who will continue to be faithful with our giving so that we can continue to move forward in the spirit of excellence. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you for those seeds. As we prepare to go higher into our worship celebration on today, we definitely want to petition the throne of grace. And before we do that, one other special announcement that I do want to share with you is that we know Father's Day is coming up on next Sunday. That's right, Father's Day is coming up on next Sunday. And that is one of those days that doesn't get the kind of attention that some of the other days get in honoring people. And when we look at the climate of the world that we live in right now, fathers, men are all being challenged right now, uh, especially black men, when it comes down to their lives being sustained. And we want to honor the, the presence of black men who are representing the role of fatherhood in their homes. And so we need you all to do us a favor. We want you to just send us uh, your pictures of those fathers with their children. And we want to honor them next Sunday during our worship celebration. We're going to play it during our announcement period to honor all of those fathers out there. That's right. We want you to get those pictures sent in. You can email it to the church at perfectinglovecommunitychurch.org. You can uh, tag it, send it to one of us. We'll also have more information on our 
Facebook app that you can, uh, on our Facebook page rather, that you can go and get that information to us. But please, 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 let's not leave the fathers out. We want to make sure that we celebrate and honor all of these wonderful men of God who continue to forge ahead despite these times. God has us alive. Can you believe that? Yes, we are still alive and we are here. And we want to honor every single father on this, on next Sunday during our worship celebration. So don't forget to do that. Do that without fail, and we will appreciate that, and we will show it next Sunday during our worship celebration. As we prepare to go higher in the Word of God and in the presence of God, we want to definitely just have a word of prayer, and then, of course, our music ministry will come back to us with our semantic selection before we go into the Word of God. So right now, I ask that you would just bow your heads with me for a moment of prayer. God, we thank you now for this day. We thank you for waking us up this morning. We thank you for starting us on our way. God, we thank you for the activities of our limbs. We thank you that we can inhale and exhale. We thank you, Lord God, that we have technology to be able to connect with the church, to be able to connect with you. God, we thank you for everything that you continue to do. Thank you for keeping us healthy. Thank you for protecting us from all hurt, harm, and danger. Thank you for keeping our families. Thank you for the roof that we have over our heads, the bed that we slept in last night, the food that we are partaking in on today. God, we thank you for everything that you continue to do. God, we continue to lift you up right now and call on heaven so that there will be a change in this world, oh God. We call on you right now so that, oh God, all of those who may be involved in many of these terrible acts of hate and violence, oh God, will have their heart changed so that they can petition you and go after you in a way that will change them forever. Oh God, we pray for those still battling this coronavirus, this corona pandemic. We speak against it right now in the name of Jesus and we speak life. Oh God, we pray that you will continue to cover and keep all of those essential workers. God, we pray that you will just protect them from all hurt, harm, and danger. Let them know that you are walking right beside them every step of the way. Oh God, we pray right now that you will remind all of us of the importance of being responsible during this time. Let us stay responsible, oh God. Don't let us listen to everything that we hear in the news that says it's okay because they've reopened everything, that we can go back to things as normal, knowing that this virus is still prevalent. Don't let us be blind, oh God, but let us be reminded that we are to be responsible and practice this distance so that we can get back together once again when the time is right. Oh God, some of us have been going, uh, wondering in our mind what's going on and, and, and stressing out in our mind and we come against right now stress. We come against depression. We come against any mode uh, uh, that will try to bring us down in the name of Jesus. I speak now that our souls will all be lifted up, that our spirits will be uplifted. Even in this moment, let the word and the worship and the praise and the songs that go forth on today. Let it be an uplifter to our soul today, oh God, to our spirit. In the name of Jesus, no weapon that's formed against us shall prosper. And we believe today is a new day, the beginning of a brand new life. And we decree and declare that today will be the best day of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Come on. I don't care if you have been sitting down all day. Stand up on your feet. Lift up your voice and let's sing with the praise team. Let's have church. Hallelujah. The Lord's been so good. I can't praise him enough. I owe the Lord my life. I can't praise him enough even if I try. Say, say. You've been so good, so good. You've been, you've been so good. Lord, you 
are good. You've been so good. You've been so good. Lord, you are Lord, good. You are good. You've been better. You've been better than good. I can good. praise you. I can't praise you enough. I owe you my life. Yeah. I owe you my life. I can't praise you. Can't praise you enough. Even if I try. Even if I try, Lord.
So many times you've been you've seen me through. So good. I can't praise you enough. You've been We're moving out of the way. So good. But Lord, you've been so good to me. You've been so good, so good, so good, so good. You've been, you've been. Can somebody say that from the bottom of your heart? Just tell the Lord. Say you been, you been so good, so good. You been so good, so good. So so good to us. God, we bless you right now, Lord. You've been mighty, mighty good to us. With that, God, we tell you thank you. Hallelujah. We bless your mighty name, oh God. We feel your presence in this place. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. God, we Pause for a moment just to beg of you, Lord, to send your word. God, we need to hear from you yet again. Our hearts are troubled. Our emotions are all over the place. But we know, God, you are a calming force in this chaotic world. So right now, God, send your word. Give me what to say and how to say it. Set the captive free on today. Lord God, we pray that some soul will hear what you have to say and their lives will be changed forever. God, it's our prayer today that no damage be done to your word. So I ask that you will hide me behind the cross. I pray, Lord God, that you would increase as I would decrease. Lord God, I pray now that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, strengthen my redeemer. In the name of Jesus we pray. Let every grateful heart shout, thank God, amen and amen. God be the glory for the things that he has done. We thank God for music ministry. I want to proceed directly into the word of God on today in which I will be picking up right where I left off on last Sunday. Very challenging word to share, but definitely necessary for the times. And the Lord continues to deal with me accordingly as it relates to the times that we live in to continue to remind the people of God where we stand as a church and what the word of the Lord says concerning these particular issues that we are dealing with right now. And it is my prayer that you would hear what thus said the Lord. And we will direct our attention by way of focus to 2 Timothy chapter number 1 verses 7 through 10. When you get there you will find these words. For God had not given us 
the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. Who hath saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. But is now, now, it's now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death and hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. I want to go back and put special emphasis on the seventh verse that says, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power. I want to stop reading there and I want to share with you for the next few moments from this thought power. Actions speak louder than words. Power. Actions speak louder than words. My brothers and sisters in Christ, power is a subject that is controversy. It's full of controversy and conflict and uh, at, at times even war. Power is a gift that lends itself to being challenged with struggle. Since the beginning of time, power has been challenged by struggle. The struggle of power is, uh, has a tendency to create enemies due to the selfish and fleshful desires to dominate others while exalting oneself. The power of God was never intended to create supremacy of people over people. I'll say that again. The power of God was never intended to create supremacy of people over people. The intent of God's power is to unify people of all nationalities, of all races and creeds, to reign supreme over the demonic forces of the world. The Apostle Paul reminds us in Ephesians chapter number 6 and verse number 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. My enemy is not flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, uh, against spiritual wickedness in high places. In other words, whenever we make the struggle of power against people instead of the demonic spirit that's using the people, we irresponsibly fight the people instead of fighting the spirit living in the people. If change is going to happen, my brother, and sisters in Christ, two things must take place from a high level. The person, number one, the person and or the people with the demonic spirit have to acknowledge that they are not using the power that they have in the right way. These people abuse their power by enforcing regulations, systems, laws, and constitutions to suppress others they feel are beneath them. These people also demonstrate behaviors of unrighteousness Righteousness, but they call it right. These people tend to justify wrong behaviors by misusing holy scriptures as an affirmation of wicked thoughts. The second thing that we must understand is that the people and or the person who carries the spirit of God needs to be willing and bold enough to call out demonic spirits using or uh, being used by the other people. In other words, this person here must say if something is wrong, they must say something. Something. This person will, should not be afraid to challenge unrighteousness and make sure that they are challenging unrighteous power with the righteous power of God. This person will live the change that they want to see. In other words, they are encouraged to remind themselves over and over and over again, though things don't look the way I want it to look, I will not give.
give up in today's society, my brothers and sisters in Christ, particular uh, in uh, the divided states of America, we are witnessing a power struggle that has been going on since the foundation uh, of uh, this country. The result of this demonic power led to uh, create the creation of the demonic systems and government and even legislations that have enforced supremacy of the white race over every other race of color. Here is where we see the fruit of demonic activity. Those who founded this country and those who possess the same demonic spirit of those who founded this country validated their actions with the misinterpretation and the false application of God's holy word to continue to contest that they have not done anything wrong. The devil is a, a liar. And the challenge of this issue is when we refuse to exercise righteous power in an effort to abolish unrighteous power. In our focus text today, we see that Brother Timothy was in a very similar situation of a power struggle. Timothy had to face pushback from people that did not admit that they were being used by demonic forces. Timothy was thrust into trying to inspire people to do what was right against the demonic spirits using other people to do wrong. Timothy was endowed the power from above, but he questioned himself. He questioned how to use it effectively and bring about change. Therefore, my brothers and sisters in Christ, there was a voice from an ambassador of change, Timothy's father in the ministry, the Apostle Paul, that reminded him of a few things that will live today, that will stand today. The first thing that Paul reminded Timothy was that power displays strength even in the midst of struggle. I'll say that again. Power displays strength even in the midst of struggle. That's why Paul testified to Timothy of his own experiences. Do you understand how powerful your testimony is? What you have gone through, what you're dealing with, what you're having to face right now was just because God wanted to show the face of the enemy that you will not win. He brought you through it so other people can see just how powerful not you are but how powerful God is the God that lives on the inside of us so he testified to Timothy to remind him of how powerful he really was the second thing that he reminded Timothy about power is that power requires a strong connection that's right you can't have power unless your connection is strong Paul reminded Timothy of his connection and that connection was rooted in faith faith is not what we see is what we can't see. And I know my brothers and sisters in Christ, it's difficult to see that we're going to have equality and that we're going to have these unjust issues dealt with. I know it may be difficult, but I'm here to remind somebody today that God says don't lose your faith because your faith connects you to your power. And the moment your faith is wavering, you can't even move God. You can't even please God. For the Bible says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. This is true dependence on God that God I can't do anything without you I see hatred but I know that God is going to make a way the third thing that Paul told young Timothy was that power requires activation Paul explained to Timothy if you want God's power to live in you and through you you are required to stir up the gift of God that is in you God did not give you a spirit of fear because fear comes from demonic systems of oppression and hatred. Fear is something that will try to torment you, but perfect love casts out fear. God gave you power, is what Paul told Timothy. In other words, power requires action. And I'm so glad that Paul reminded Timothy that power requires action because we live in a society right now that is full of people that's doing a lot of talking but not doing any doing. Y'all hear what I'm saying today? There are people right now that's saying stuff but ain't doing nothing and the devil is a lie it's time for us to put our uh, action in uh, put our words into action and I want to show you this in the word of God because it will help you understand how important your actions are in relation to uh, your words your words are powerful your words are necessary but we have to have action that go along with our words I want us to direct our attention to James chapter number two and verses 
14 through verses number 26 in the New Living Translation. Here's what it says. What good is it, dear brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith, but you don't show it by your actions? Can that kind of faith say anyone? Suppose you see a brother or a sister who has no food, who has no clothing, and you say goodbye and have a good day, stay warm and eat well, but then you don't give that person any food and or clothing. What good does that do? See, so you see faith by itself isn't enough unless it produces good deeds. It is dead and useless. Verse 18 says, now someone may argue some people have faith, others have good deeds. But I say, how can you show me your faith if you don't have any good deeds? I will show you my faith by my good deeds. Verse 19 says, you say you have faith. For you believe that there is one God. Good for you. Even the demons believe this and they tremble in terror. How foolish the writer says. Can't you see that faith without good deeds is useless? Don't you remember our ancestor Abraham was shown to be right with God by his actions. You ought to repeat actions right there. By his actions, he was shown right by God when he offered his son Isaac on the altar. You see, his faith and his actions work together. You ought to shout, work together, work together, work together. His actions made his faith complete. You see how this is all connecting. Verse number 23 says, and so it happened just as the scripture says. Abraham believed God and God counted him righteous because of his faith. He was even called a friend of God. So you see, we are shown to be right with God by what we do, not by faith alone, not by words alone. Look at verse 25. Rahab, the prostitute, is another example. We didn't look, God didn't look at her past. God didn't try to pull up her criminal record. Rahab, the prostitute, is another example. God didn't try to bring up what she had went through and how many mistakes she had made. And sometimes people want to bring up what you done been through. Look at what the Bible says. She was shown to be right with God by her actions when she hid those messengers and sent them safely away by a different road. Just in verse number 26, just as the body is dead without breath. Just as the body is dead without breath. Just as the body is dead without breath. So also faith is dead without good works. I know y'all are tired of reading the scriptures, but stay with me for one moment. Here is the declaration of today that the Lord told me to share with you is that we will breathe again. We will have the kind of life that God declares us to have again because all around the world, God is stirring up the gifts of power to take action amongst the people to show good works in order to demand change, in order to demand reform, in order to demand equality, to demand justice, and to demand equality. We will breathe again because we will call out demonic actions of hate. We will breathe again because our sons and daughters, we have to raise them. And we declare and decree right now in the name of Jesus, we won't bury another father. We won't bury another mother because we will raise our sons and we will raise our daughters and demand that they will be treated equally. So regardless of if we're marching, regardless of if we're kneeling, regardless of if we're having sit-ins or boycotting, we will breathe again. Let me remind you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, of the power of God's spirit. The power of God's spirit equips the believer to rebuke demonic spirits and demand that they go back to the pit of hell where they came from. That's right. God has endowed you with power to let every demonic spirit that tries to raise up in your life to send it back to where it belongs, to the pit of hell. The spiritual silver bullet of wicked demonized wolves is is the name of Jesus. If you want to kill that demonic spirit, learn how to use the name of Jesus because the word declares that demons tremble at the name of Jesus. That's right. Show up the gift of God that's in you and take action with your power. Demons have to flee at the name of Jesus. Take action and stir up the gift of God which is your power. Rebuke that hatred in the name of Jesus and take action and stir up the gift of God which is your power. Power is action and that means that it's time 
to do something. You done messed with the wrong ones. You done killed too many of us. You have made too many of us feel like we are slaves in a world that God told us that we are free. God gave us power. He created all mankind in his image. And there ain't no way we are gonna walk and live another day without exercising the power that God has given us. And my question to all of you who may be watching right now is what side of history will you be on? What side of history will you land on? Will you be one that will exercise your power for righteousness or will you be one of the ones that fall into the trap of power that is used unrighteously? What side of history will you be on today? I serve notice on every demonic spirit and let you know that your contract is canceled. I don't care if you're in the United States of America or if you're in some other country around the world. Your contract is canceled. Take your hand off of the people of God and I I speak life and I speak victory over everything that's attached to the most high God. My brothers and sisters, I got to give you the record to remind you of just how powerful and awesome and, and, and direct God is concerning his power. Let me remind you of the record associated with the struggle of power. Adam and Eve's power was challenged by a serpent. Joseph's power was challenged by his brothers. Pharaoh's power was challenged by Moses and Aaron. Nebuchadnezzar's power was challenged by Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The Midianites' power was challenged by Gideon. The Canaan's power was challenged by Joshua in the battle of Jericho. The power of Jesus was challenged by Satan when he went on a fast. Not to mention the worst battle of power was challenged by the religious leaders and traditional leaders that were going after Jesus right on the inside of the church but one thing that I noticed about all of these power struggles in the word of God one thing that I noticed is that victory always goes to God's people. Victory always goes to God's people. At the end of the day, if you are a part of God's family, you already have the victory. The devil is alive trying to convince you that you are nobody, that you are a failure, but I came to tell somebody today, you are a winner. And it starts with the words and lives in your actions. I'll say that again. It starts, your power starts with the word. And it lives in your action. My example that I want to give you regarding that is sometimes when you look at the words, the words, the words, you don't know how much power that you have. Some of you all that know me know that I have a daughter by the name of Jade and it's interesting because sometimes when Jade is rushing to make her point she will get frustrated when she can't get her point across and mama and daddy we have to remind her, Jade, you have to use your words. Use your words. Use your, we don't understand what you're saying when you're crying. Use your words. Jade, we don't understand what you're saying when you're you're mumbling and you're complaining. Use your words. And when she takes a deep breath and she focuses on what she's trying to say and she uses her words, she then has power to get her point across. What am I trying to tell you? God is trying to tell you that I know you've been crying. I know you've been weary. I know you've been frustrated, but it's time to use the word. It's time to speak the word over your life. It's time to declare it because your word is your power. Because Proverbs 18 and 21 says that death and life are in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. In other words, I came to tell somebody today, it's time for you to say something. Say something about what you're going through. Say something about what you see that's evil. Say something about what people are doing wrong because your words have power. But I got to end this thing right here and I got to remind you that after you use your words, yeah. it's time to use your power. After you say something, it's important that you do something. Yeah. Use your power to pray and to protest. Use your power to meditate and to mend relationships. Use your power to praise and to plan. Use your power to shout and to strategize. Put your fist up in the air even right now and declare that I have power. I know the devil wants to make you feel like you're weak, but say I have power power. We live in a world right now that wants you to feel that you are nobody but I dare you to declare right now over your home, over everything that you have and say I have power. Greater is he that lives in me than he that is in the world. Don't be afraid. God didn't give you a spirit of fear but he gave you power. And right now we live in a world where we demand that we be respected, treated equally, 
treated like the kings and queens that we are. We have power. And what does power give us? Power gives us victory. Some of you may be wondering when it's going to come. I can't tell you exactly when it's going to come. But I know what the end result is. We have victory. And it belongs to the Lord. And if it belongs to the Lord and we are heirs and joint heirs to the body of Christ, that reminds us, heirs and joint heirs to the throne of God, that reminds us that in the body of Christ, that all the victory that we witness through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ belongs to us. It doesn't matter. Some of your way of doing something is marching. Some of it may be kneeling. Some of it may be doing sit-ins. Some of it may be doing whatever form of protesting that you deem to be necessary to bring about change. It's not just with race relations. It's with any form of sin. You ought to protest the sin that's in your house right now. Some of you have people who aren't living right according to the word of God. When will you conduct the city in and declare power over your home? Kick the devil out and say that my marriage will work. When will you kick the devil out of your friendships and say my relationships will work? My friendships will work. When will you kick the devil out of your mind and say that my life will work? We're coming together all around this world serve notice on the enemy something has been stirred up on the inside of us and we thank God for the word that reminds us to stir up the gift of God that's in us and as you are stirring up the gift of God in you I want you to listen to the words of what they're saying make a war cry and just say oh cry out unto the Lord see the devil don't know what you're saying when you cry out and you say oh but what God is doing is giving you strength he's giving you strength to make it another day he's giving you strength to live on. He's giving you strength to fight. So open up your mouth and say, oh, shout out. Cry aloud and stand out. Oh, oh, oh. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to him. Open your mouth and say, Because you belong to God, it belongs to you. Victory belongs. It 
touch you you're ready to change your life I want to pray the prayer of salvation with you right now just repeat after me say dear God I'm sorry for all of the wrong I've ever done come into my life and forgive me I confess I am a sinner I confess that Jesus died for my, sins. for my sins and rose, and rose early, early Sunday morning, Sunday morning. Because, because of my confession, of my confession. And, because and because of what I believe, of what I believe. in my heart, in my heart. According, to your word, according to your word I, I am, am saved. saved praise God Hallelujah. I got a message for you victory. <laughs> it belongs to you. If you're watching this broadcast and you want to make this your church home, we'll gladly take you in right now. All you have to do is come in below, whether it be YouTube or Facebook. Our staff will contact you, get you in touch with us so that we can bring you in as our newest member virtually. That's right. We'll take you in virtually. It doesn't matter where you are. We will take you in today. Hallelujah. We praise God for his word. I know it's tough right now. I know it's difficult right now, but we come bearing good news. It's time to take action. It's time to exercise our power in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You have the victory because it belongs to you. Hallelujah. We want to keep this praise party going. So we need you, if you haven't already started doing it, to pack your things up right now. If you're right here in the city of Memphis, we want to invite you to come to our lot of love our praise party that's going on right in the parking lot. We're going to have the music going and just celebrating the power of God and the fact that God is bringing us together to exercise our power right here in this world that we live in. So we pray that if you did not catch the announcements, 
that were played at the beginning of service. Just stay tuned for our announcements following the benediction. But we just want to pray the word over your life one more time and just remind you how victory belongs to you. So let me just share a word over your life by way of benediction. God, we bless you. God, we thank you. God, we love you. I speak life over my brothers and sisters in Christ. It is our prayer that you will keep us in perfect peace, in health, and in strength. It is also our prayer, O oh God, that we will be the example you need us to be in this evil world. I speak life over our finances. I speak life over our health. I speak life over our relationships. We curse the devil to the pit of hell, and we cancel his contract. And we speak now that everything that's tried to exalt itself against the Lord will be brought down, and every crooked path will be made straight. I speak now that the blessings of the Lord will overtake you, that a window of heaven will be opened and pour you out a blessing that you don't have room to receive it. I speak now that your days ahead will be greater than your days behind. So look to the hills from which cometh your help. All of your help comes from the Lord. Keep your eyes focused on what's ahead, forgetting those things which are behind, and press toward the mark, the prize of the high calling, which is in Jesus Christ. That's our prayer for you. In Jesus' name we pray. We want to remind you one more time that victory belongs to you. As you prepare to make your way to this sanctuary, to this church, to this parking lot, just remember that victory belongs to him, it belongs to you, and it belongs to us. Victory belongs. Yes, Lord. Receive that today. Victory. Victory belongs to for Perfecting Love Community Church. Pastor Jay wants to meet with you. We will have ministry meetings in the next two weeks. Please see your ministry leader for further instructions. You're invited to the virtual baby shower for Jason A. Mitchell Jr. It will be hosted Sunday, June 21st at 4 p.m. via Facebook Live. For more information and a better look at the flyer, please visit our Facebook page, Perfecting Love Community Church. Zoom, Zoom, Zoom. Our virtual study groups are really growing. Our groups meet for Perfecting Wow on Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. and Sunday School every Sunday at 9 a.m. There is no excuse why we can't be present and on time. Let's grow together. If this ministry is a blessing to you, we pray you will consider being a financial blessing to the ministry. Your gift of any amount is a tremendous blessing to our outreach. To give, simply text PLCC to 77977. Click on the link and follow the instructions. Thank you in advance for your generosity. For the latest information, please visit our website, perfectinglovecommunitychurch.org, like our Facebook page, Perfecting Love Community Church, or subscribe to our YouTube channel, Perfecting Love CC. These have been your morning announcements. We are Perfecting Love Community Church, the place where imperfect people strive for God's perfect love. We don't judge, we love, and we love you with the love of the Lord. Be blessed and have a wonderful day.